So does anybody remember what the ripple carry adder was? Or how about this? What does the ripple in ripple carry adder mean? The ripple, ripples, or the carry ripples through. Okay? So what we did is we built this adder, which was a bit adder. Okay, so it's going to take one bit, add it to another bit, and produce a sum and a carry out. <clears throat> but the carry out always goes somewhere, and it almost always goes to another bit adder. So what we have to do is we have to build a full adder that considers not only an input, an input, but also the carry out of a prior addition. So as a result, our adders always have three inputs, okay? And they always produce a sum and then a carry out. So in the ripple, what happens is that we build these full adders and then we ripple the carry from one stage to the next stage and then from that stage to the next stage and that stage to the next stage. The issue with that is that the delay becomes considerable because when you hit it with the inputs, all the inputs change at the exact same time and that's because they come from the output of a flip flop. So you go clock and they all appear and then everything starts rippling. When the adder is done with the sum is when all of the outputs have settled. Or when you analyze it, it's the worst case delay through the circuit. Because not every inputs or not all inputs will produce a delay, which is worst case. But some might. Okay? So what we have to do is we always put the delay of a combinational logic circuit as the worst case delay. So life is good, right? And we also talked about how would the equation to model the delay through this if all of the delays were equal to each other. Okay, does everybody remember that? It was something like a two plus a niner exponent something. Do you remember that? Or it was three plus two times parentheses n minus one. Do you remember that? Okay, so life is good, and n is the number of bits, and this is not a big deal if you do a four bit adder, but it's a huge deal if you do a 64 bit adder. Okay? All right, all right. So you, you immediately say, look, there's got to be a different way. There's got to be a better way to create an adder which is fast. Would you believe this? All right. So what we do is you usually see two types of fixed point adders, ripple carry adder or what we call a carry look-ahead adder. All right? And a carry look-ahead adder is going to try to address the problem of the ripple. Okay? Okay, life is good. Life is good. So, what are we going to do? We need to create an architecture that looks like this. If you think about it, every full adder is waiting for the ripple or the carry out from the prior stage. So if we said, why don't we build an adder where every stage computes its own carry in? Okay? Now, if you do that, what would happen is that the levels of logic, which dictate the delay, will always be fixed because you're just going to have these big combinational logic circuits right here. This is a design trade-off okay? because you're going to start inserting a whole bunch of logic in order to compute these carry-ins at the expense of area. Okay? So you're going to have a ton of gates. <clears throat> now, what does each circuit need to look at? It needs to look at only the inputs. It can't look at any of the interim calculations. So that means that every one of these little carry generator circuits has to look at only the inputs A and B on all the bits and potentially C0, which is the input carry into the entire thing. So all we are trying to do is create logic circuits that we just showed for the carry logic. Okay? but they can only depend on A, B, or C0. So somebody came up, some mathematician, some computer scientist, came up with this way to do this algebraic variable substitution in order to come up with a way to create all of the logic expressions for C1, C2, C3, and C4. All right? And here's the whole concept of it. <clears throat> what they do is they create this notion of what we call a generate and a propagate. Okay? So if you think about a generate, a generate would be there is no carry coming in. Okay? So you have a circuit like this, and there's no carry coming in. So zero is coming in, and we are looking at the logic which would generate a carry out. Okay? So no carry in, but it did create a carry out. Okay? 
And then we say, okay, what does that look like? Well, if you look at the true table, this is the true table for the carry out of a single bit adder. Okay, and it's pretty simple. All you're doing is you're adding these together. Zero plus zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus zero plus one is zero. And you, or, what the hell? Yeah, the carry out is zero. <laughs> you're not adding them. So you look at this truth table, and this is the truth table we've had before, and you say, for when there is no carry in, in what situation do you actually generate a carry out? Well, it's only in this situation right here. It's only when a is a 1 and B is a 1. Okay. So you could, see, you could come up with this generic expression that says, generically, the generate logic for any position, positional adder, is A and with B. It's like, okay, whatever. I kind of knew that to begin with. And then they said, when do you propagate a carry? Okay. So if you look at this, you go, okay, if there was a carry that came into here, you would have a carry on this, these situations, 1, 1, 1, 1, where it's these four, these bottom four rows of the true table, and you say, when did it propagate? Well, it's these three puppies right here where the input carry propagated to the output. And in that situation, it's essentially A ORD with B. So you could come up with this generic expression for the propagate behavior of a single bit adder that is equal to A ORD with B. So you have these two generic terms, P and G, okay? And these exist for each of the bits within the adder, okay? And you go, okay, what, what the hell are you doing with this? Well, let's draw, let's write out an expression using these cool little variables that we've done. And for the first stage, or for any stage, you could say C out can be described as G, which is going to be everybody up here, or P anded with CN, okay? And you say, where did the anded with CN come from? Well, it comes from the fact that we're going to have A ORD with B right here, but we have to AND it with CN in order to actually get the Well, this is getting a little weird. Let's test it out on the first stage, okay? So let's put in A and B. Let's substitute these puppies in. So I'm going to have C out is equal to A and with B, so I just substituted in G, and then I had P is equal to A ORD with B, and then and with CN. Do you remember what that expression is? That is the expression for the carry out of any one of these logic, or any one of these adders. Okay? And it's like, okay, that's cool. Where did that come from? Does everybody remember this table? Right here? That's just the true table for carry out. And you're like, holy crap, dude, you're just saying the same thing over and over, aren't we? We haven't done anything new today. It's like, that's very true. Except, let's take a look at this. Let's create a generic term for generate of, we'll give it the subscript i, which represents the bit position. So for a 4-bit adder, we can have 0, 1, 2, or 3. Okay? And that's just ai and with bi. All right, whatever. And then how about p? Well, p is nothing more than... AI ORD with BI, yeah, whatever, whatever, dude. And then you say, okay, now this one's actually kind of neat. It says the carry for the next bit position, the next higher order bit position, is equal to the generate of the lower, of the, or you could say the current adder, ORD with the propagate from the current adder, and with the carry in of the current adder. It's like, okay, well, all right, all right, whatever. So this here represents the logic circuit for the next stage. Okay? And it's written kind of algebraically agnostic. All right. So why the hell do we do that? Let's write the carry or the carry expression for C1. Okay? So here's what C1 is. And this is all algebraically. Okay? This is all algebraically. So you say C1 is equal to G0 ORD with P0, and it with C0. Does that feel good? That is exactly this expression right here, except I left G0 and P0 in there. I just did a variable substitution. Okay? Okay, so I feel okay. And why in the world did I do that? It's because the whole trick of the thing is that when I go to write the expression for the next stage, which would be C2, it is in terms of G1, P1, and C1. Everybody feel that? 
But I can do a variable substitution of C1 into here in order to get this type of expression. Okay? So now look at what I have. I have this in terms of G1, P1, G0, P0, and C0. Why did I do that? It is no longer in terms of a C1 that is dependent on the prior adder. Okay? All P1 and G1 are are going to be ands and ors of the A1 and B1 terms that come in. So that means I've thrown a whole bunch of logic at it, but I've got an expression that is only in terms of the inputs, A, B, and C0. All right, well, let's continue that and see what happens. Okay? I can even expand this out a little bit if I wanted to. So usually you draw it like this in order to get it into our favorite logic topology, which is sum of products. All right, well, let's keep going. There's only four of these, so it shouldn't be too long, right? You're like, please. Okay, so I come down here. Here is C3. It is nothing more than G2 ordered with P2 and with C2. But we got to get rid of the C2 because that depends on a prior bit addition. So what we do is the exact same thing. We do a variable substitution where we bring down C2 and replace it. And then what we do is we just distribute through in order to get into sum of products, and life is good. Okay? Now you look at that. Look at how big this logic expression is. It's pretty big. But it is only in terms of G2, P2, G1, G0. Or let's do it like this. G2, G1, G0, P2, P1, P0, and C0. Why did that matter? It's because all of those terms are only dependent on A, B, and C0. But this freaking circuit's getting big. Check this out. I come down here and I do C4. It's exactly the same thing. G3 ordered with P3 ordered with C3. We got to get rid of C3 because that depends on the prior bit add. So we do a variable substitution, okay? And look at how this massiveness right there. We got to distribute it through to get it into a sum of products, and there you go. You're like, holy crap. Are you really going to implement this thing? What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> or else this would be a waste of your time, wouldn't it? And I wouldn't do that to you. Okay. First of all, we now are going to draw out a new carry look ahead adder. Okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to start by modifying the adder. Okay. So this is called a modified full adder. Let's check this out. Watch this modified full adder. What we do with this, you know, you're like, <laughs> that's awesome. So I take this thing and I make the sum. And the sum we already know is just A exclusive order with B exclusive order with C in. Okay? So that produces the sum and that's the easy part. But the trick on this is that within that full adder, I also throw an OR gate and an AND gate for the sole purpose of creating G0 and P0. Okay? Now, watch this. I come down and I want to now create the carry logic for C1. Okay? So look at what I do. I use those logic expressions and I say, okay, well, I'm going to have G0 ORed with P0 and with C0. It takes an AND gate and an OR gate, but this logic expression which came from this little fella right here, which came from our cool little table, right there, okay, is now implemented with gates. And you look at this and you're like, holy crap, this is a lot of logic. Let's count up the levels of logic and see if we did anything cool. Well, level one is going to occur at this OR gate, okay? And then you got, an, excuse me, this exclusive OR gate. Then you got another level one, which does the propagate and the generate. So these puppies right here, they're all at the same level. So that's level one. Then what happens is you watch the, the signals flow to the next operation. The next operation will occur here. So this is level two. But if I, I broke the drawing up and I have the AND that takes P0 and C0 and does the AND here, so this is at level two and this is at level two also. So we just say that's the second level of logic. Then you follow it through again. This last oring with the generate term 
is actually the third level of logic. And what happens is that C1 is created in three levels of logic. OK. That doesn't help us with a single bit adder. But it does help us when we look at this. Let's now bring on another modified full adder and take a look at how this looks. So I've got the same piece of information. I am going to create the sum for bit position 1 using two exclusive OR gates. But check it out. They're at level 1 right here. And then level 2 needs to include the carry from the prior stage, which is created with this circuit right here. Okay, And it's like, well, OK, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I look at the, the carry logic for, the net, for bit position 1, it is a big logic expression. Okay? It's the same logic expression that we had right here. This little baby right here. So it's C2. So it's this big sum of products. But look at what a sum of products does. How many levels of logic is a sum of products? Assuming you don't have an inversion, which we don't in this situation. It is 2. Okay? But look at it. This, these two levels of logic only depend on G1, G0, P1, P0, and C0. So they occur at the same type of timing as this guy right here. So where the next level of logic comes from is that this exclusive OR gate depends on C1, but it was created by this circuit right here. So indeed, you actually have one more level of logic. So four levels of logic, and now the second sum is created. So bit position one sum is created. Let's keep going. If I go to the next one, look at what happens. I have this monsterish carry look ahead logic that produces C2, but now it was only produced in two levels of logic, and it fed it into here. This is finally where we see the magic. This sum right here was created in four levels of logic, which is the same as this guy right here. Now, this sum was created in two levels of logic, so we didn't care about it, but we finally hit the plateau where we have a fixed number of logic levels and a fixed amount of delay. You see it even greater when you look at the last position, which is check. Look at this circuit right here. This is freaking crazy. So you come over to here, and you got your full adder. It's C3. comes from this monster circuit right here. It only takes two levels because it's a sum of product. It feeds it into here. This sum is produced in four levels of logic. Holy crap. And then you finally get carry out, which is C4. It is produced with just the same sum of products expression, and that is the entire adder. So now you look at this. You, you zoom out, and you marvel at this freaking thing. Look at, it, look at this. What do you think of it? Yeah, I know. I'm speechless. <laughs> speechless. But how many levels of logic did it take to create the result? Four. And it didn't matter how many bits were in it. It was four whether it was two bits, three bits, or four bits. And it's four, theoretically, for 8 bits, 16, 32, 64. So what this does is it shows you how sometimes in logic, you will just say, I'm going to optimize for something other than the most minimal circuit. I'm going to optimize for the result being produced as quickly as possible. And in this situation, you just threw gates at it. Now, if you do the logic on this, this circuit right here is just ridiculous. It is a circuit that is essentially performing all of these prior additions and looking at and just creating the carry out down here. You're just throwing gates at it. Now, how does that feel? It's pretty awesome. Let me ask you one question. I said theoretically you could expand this forever. Okay? You look at these gates. Look at how this carry logic is growing. You got that thing. You got that thing. This one only had two gates, an and an or. This had two ands and an or. This one had three ands and an or. This had four ands and an or. What is something that you will encounter as you expand this more and more? Fan in. Okay? If you look at this, even on bit position three, you already have an OR gate that has one, two, three, four, five inputs. What is a typical fan in specifications for modern logic? Yeah, it's like six ish, eight ish. Sometimes you'll see like 10 or 12, but it's not infinite. Okay? It's in the realm of you're going to hit a fan in limitation as soon as you get to eight bits. So tell me what would happen 
if you had one fan in issue and that would be a first it would it would happen right here with this or gate the or gate here I go to 8 bits okay you have a fan in issue what do you do to that fan in you have to break it up by doing another cascaded stage of and of or gates so what happens is every time you hit a fan in issue you have to add one level of logic so what will happen is this dude right here, this OR gate, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this AND gate, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you will have to add a level of logic to break up that fan in on both of those gates. And that will actually add two levels of logic. So fan in is what causes the carry look ahead adder to, instead of being flat versus the number of bits, it will actually step up. Okay, So if you, if you tried to plot, like, okay, I'm going to plot, like, number of bits versus levels of logic, you would come out and you'd start at four, okay? And this would be like two, three, four, five. And at some point, okay, you're going to have a fan in issue. And let's just say arbitrarily it happens somewhere out there. What happens is that as soon as you hit this fan in issue, it jumps by two, okay? And then it'll jump by two, and it'll jump by two. So it does increase, the delay does increase a little bit, but it doesn't increase exponentially or linearly up. Okay, like a ripple carry adder, it it kind of goes with this logarithmic just like step function thing. Does that feel good? <laughs> Life is good. You have now looked at the carry look ahead adder. What do you take away from that? Let's say you're interviewing with Intel, okay? And they say, here's a here's a ripple carry adder, and I'm gonna give you a carry look ahead adder. What is a carry look ahead adder compared to a ripple carry adder? What would you say? Speed versus size, yes. And how do you achieve that speed? What you do is you say, I'm going to throw gates in order to create logic to generate the carries at each bit. Okay? And I don't care how big they are, I just want those carries computed immediately so that I don't have to wait for the carries to ripple from prior additional stages. Okay? Or addition stages. Okay, that's pretty much all I have to say about that.